This short presentation has been made to help those who didn't quite follow the ideas about the decision rule for profit maximising. In the first place we start with perfect competition and see that the cost structure in the short run is fixed for the company, they cannot adjust. In perfect competition each firm is a price taker and inherits the market equilibrium price which has been determined when industry supply equals industry demand. In our example this price will be P star. The firm can sell any units it likes at this price and thus its demand curve is horizontal. As the demand curve is horizontal average revenue per unit sold is constant as is marginal revenue and they're both equal to P star. The first part of our decision rule says choose output where the marginal revenue curve is cut by the marginal cost curve from below. Following the rule the profit maximizing output is equal to Q star. The second part of our decision rule states that we must charge what the market will bear for this optimal output. And what the market will bear is given by the average revenue curve. So we should be able to see that the price that will maximize our profits is P star. This applies to all market structures and that will become clearer when we do actually look at these other types of competitive environment. The next task we have is to try and work out whether profits or losses are being made for this optimal output. Profit, remember, is the difference between average revenue and average cost. So we can work out the average cost of producing Q star by drawing up vertically from the point Q star up to the average cost curve. Thus, Profit per unit is OP star minus OC star. And total supernormal profit is calculated by multiplying the profit per unit by the optimal output Q star. On the diagram, I've shown this by shading the area AB, C star, P star. Now let's try applying the arguments I've just used to the example from the worksheets, i.e. question 6.4. The first thing I did was complete question 1. I calculated the column of marginal costs. I did that by applying the formula that marginal cost is the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. The column is shaded and the figures are shown. For the second question, you're asked to calculate the market price, and you need to approach this in stages. At an output level of 100 units, you are told that the profit is 130, and the total cost of producing these 100 units is £520. Therefore, the total revenue must be £650, 130 plus 520. The price is equal to average revenue, Average revenue is total revenue divided by quantity and thus the market price must be £6.50. £650 divided by the 100 units. So let's take stock where we are. At an output of 100 units the marginal cost is £6 but the marginal revenue that we could derive from selling extra units is £6.50. Thus we notice that there are profitable opportunities that we can get by planning to produce and sell a bigger output. So what do the last comments mean? Well, to help you, I've added two new columns to the table to show total revenue and profit. At an output of 100 units, total revenue is 650 and the super normal profit is 130. But and this is important, we can make more profit by planning to expand output to 120 units. This will generate increased profits, i.e. profits will go up to £140 because we have followed our decision rule. Just a bit more to finish it up. The rules that I've derived in this little presentation apply to all types of market structure where consumers all pay the same price. Also, 
the rules apply even if firms are making losses. If they were making losses, we would have to determine whether they should close down in the short run. Remember the rule that we had before is that keep going in the short run if you're making a contribution towards fixed costs, i.e. you're at least covering variable costs. Thanks. That's the end of this. You can now try exercise 6.3 from the workshop as well, just to confirm that you understand what's going on.